Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an in and out tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. I'm going to talk about the ins and outs of the event browser and event library. So here we are in a brand new event, empty of all media. The event library contains a list of all the attached drives that are recognized by Final Cut as being capable of containing events or projects, including the system drive for my computer as indicated by this home icon. As you can see, I have an event called New Event on my system drive. Events can exist on any drive, but there must be at least one event available. If I attempt to delete this event, I get an error message. Now there are a few things about the default setup of the event library that bother me. First of all, I don't enjoy my events sorted by whatever year they were created. Some people might like that, but it's not that important to me. Also. I don't want to keep events and media on my system drive. It's never a good idea to combine the drive that runs the application with the media that I'm editing. But as I've shown you, you can't delete this event, at least as long as it's the only event. I'm going to select another drive, one that isn't my system drive, then go up to File, New Event, or use the shortcut Option N. The new event is created on my Thor drive. Now that the two events exist, I can delete the original off my system drive. There. But that's only half the problem. I don't want to ever create events on my system drive, but Final Cut will always recognize it and make it available. Luckily there's a trick that you can use. Select the drive that you want to hold events. In my case it's going to be this Thor drive. Then click on this gear at the bottom of the library. These are the settings for the event library. Uncheck Group Events by Disk. All the drive icons are now hidden. Then go back to where it says Group Events by Date and select Don't Group Events by Date. That's going to get rid of the calendar icon and all I'm left with is a straight listing of my events. Now I'll create a new event with the shortcut option N. And then go back to the gear and choose Group Events by Disk just for a moment. I just want to show you something. Notice that the new event is created on the drive that was last selected before the disks were hidden. With the drives hidden, all new events will be created in one place, and I don't have to worry about them accidentally being created on my system drive. There is also a preference to sort events by the most recent. If this is unchecked, events will be sorted in alphabetical order. In the event browser are icons inviting us to import existing QuickTime files or import from a camera. I don't want to get sidetracked explaining the various ways to import into Final Cut 10. That could be its own tutorial. Rather, I want to show you a project that already contains media so we can go over the best way to utilize your event browser. I'm going to quit Final Cut and open a Finder window. I'll select my Thor drive so that you can see its contents. If you create an event or a project, Final Cut will create a Final Cut Events and Final Cut Projects folder on the root of your selected drive. This is where Final Cut will look for events and it's the only place it looks. Now I created these folders. This is where I move events that I'm finished with or that I just don't want showing up when Final Cut is open. If you keep the number of events and projects down, it helps the overall performance of the program. Until Apple makes managing of projects a part of the program itself, this is how you can trick it into only showing the events and projects that you want it to. I'm going to twirl down the Event Archive folder and drag the one called Toy Story 3 Premiere into the Active Events folder. Now I'll restart Final Cut. As you can see, the event now shows up with all its imported media. Now we can get to organizing this event. This is the default way that clips are shown in the event browser. If you've come from iMovie, perhaps that isn't too different, but for editors who are used to working with hundreds of clips, this is a horrible, horrible way to show it. I mean, it's really just a mess. Luckily, it's easy to change. To adjust the clip thumbnails, drag this slider all the way to the right until it says All. This creates a single thumbnail for each clip. Then click the switch to make further changes. Some people like working with thumbnails, but I find it difficult, particularly if the clips are long, because it's hard to skim through 20 to 30 minutes of a clip with a single little thumbnail. It's too easy to skip over shots. 
but even if you like working with thumbnails, I would still suggest turning off the waveforms checkbox, because this will help the system respond faster. You can also change the size of the thumbnails here, but I'm not going to bother because I like the event browser to have a completely different look. To the left of the browser are these two icons. Think of them as film strip and list view. Clicking the one on the right shows the clips as a list with a single film strip which displays the currently selected clip. This is closer to how I like it. The film strip works as a sort of mini viewer and is longer than a single thumbnail, making it much easier to scrub through clips. But I'm still bothered by the rest of the organization going on here. The clips seem to be organized by dates, and I prefer my own custom way of organizing clips. If I go to the event library gear, I can select group clips by and choose none. This will dump my clips into one big list, which is actually what I want. There are other choices here if you have a different method of organization, but personally I get all the organization I need from keyword collections that we're going to talk about in a minute. Also, in case you are wondering what the Arrange Clips menu does, it's for organizing clips that are in the film strip view, and it's not selectable in the list view. Okay, this is much better, but there are still too many clips to sort through. Ideally, all of my clips should be grouped in such a way that I only have to search through a small handful of clips at a time to find the shot that I'm looking for. In other nonlinear editing programs, this means creating bins, and sometimes folders, and sometimes bins inside of folders. In Final Cut 10, it means keyword collections. A keyword collection is a way of tagging your clips with metadata so that the program can sort them. This is more efficient than bins because of its flexibility. Here's how it works. I'm going to select the first clip in my project. It's a little girl picking up tickets for the movie. I want this clip to be in a collection of shots that deal with tickets. I can tag this shot in a number of ways. One way would be to hit Command K to bring up the keyword HUD. Here I can just type in anything, a keyword like say ticket booth, and hit return. In the event browser, a keyword collection is created below the event with the name ticket booth. If I click on the collection, Final Cut will hide every clip in my event that is not tagged with that keyword. Since I've only tagged one clip, that's all I'm going to see. So keyword collections merely hide the clips that I don't need to see at any given moment. But this is only scratching the surface. I'm going to select the event so that I can see all of my clips again. The next clip in my event is more ticket booth b-roll. Note the keyword HUD is empty. Instead of typing the word again, I'm going to just twirl down this little disclosure triangle to reveal keyword shortcuts. Ticket booth was automatically added to the shortcut control 1, so all I have to do is hit the shortcut keys and my second clip is tagged. But really, this is not a very efficient way to tag clips. I'm just going to close this HUD and go to my next clip. It's a shot of the line to get inside the theater. I need a new collection for that, so I'm going to go up to the File menu and choose New Keyword Collection, or use the shortcut Command-Shift-K. Do not mistake it for a Smart Collection, by the way, which is something else entirely. I can select my clip and simply drag it into the collection to add it. In fact, the next three shots are all shots of the line, so I can just Shift-click to select them all and drag them at the same time into my line collection. If you don't want the drag and drop approach, keep in mind that you can select multiple clips and use the keyword HUD or the keyword shortcut to tag them all at once. Now at this stage, it might actually be more helpful to view my clips as thumbnails because then I can see at a glance what collection they need to be in. My next clip is a shot of the sign and of the line, so I'm going to skip that for a moment and go to the ones next to it. They are both shots of the ticket booth, and if I scroll down a little farther, I can see another shot of the ticket booth. To choose clips that aren't right next to each other, I just need to hold down the command key when I select them, and then just drag them into the collection. But there's a problem. I have a lot of clips here. How do I know if I've already tagged something? Well, a tagged clip will have this blue line across it, but it could still be kind of hard to keep track of everything when you literally have hundreds of clips to sift through. So here's a nice trick. In the upper part of the event browser is a drop-down menu. Currently it says Hide Rejected. If I click on it, you'll see that there's another way to sort your clips. I'm interested in the one that says No Ratings or Keywords. 
What this does is hide any clip that has been previously tagged. This is a great way to sort clips at the beginning of a project. You just keep tagging them until they're all gone. Now, at the top of our event browser is the clip that I skipped over earlier. It's the shot of the sign, but it also is a shot of the line outside. I know I have some other shots of the sign that I want to group together, so I'm going to create a new keyword collection with the command shift K shortcut, and then I'll label it sign. As I drag this clip into the sign collection, it promptly disappears from my event browser. And when I click on the sign collection, it's empty. So what happened to my clip? Well, this is because the browser is still hiding any tagged clips. I'll just select the All Clips choice so that I can see it again. Note that there are shortcuts for all of these views, by the way, so if you go back and forth a lot, it may be useful to remember them. Okay, so now I can see my sign clip. Since this is both a shot of the sign as well as a shot of the line, I need this clip to be visible in both collections. So, all I do is select it here and drag it into the line collection to add it there as well. Dragging from one collection to another doesn't move the clip, it merely tags it with both keywords, making that one clip available in both places. This is much more efficient to copying and pasting master clips into multiple bins. One clip can be in multiple collections without making the project significantly bigger. I'm going to click on my event again, and I'm going to hide my tag clips and I'll try to quickly sort some of the rest of these clips. After I tag a few more of these, I notice that some of my clips are inside the theater. Well, first I'm going to create a new collection by hitting Command Shift K again, and I will label this new collection Lobby. Then I'll drag these clips into that collection. But this gives me another opportunity to organize my project even further. I can now split my clips into interior and exterior shots. I'm just going to right click on the event and choose new folder from the menu. There is also a shortcut which is command shift N. I'll label the folder interior. Then go back to the event and create another folder and call this one exterior. Folders are a way to organize your keyword collections just as collections are ways to organize your clips. I'm just going to select all the collections that are exterior shots and drag them into the exterior folder. Then I'll do the same with the lobby collection, putting it in the interior folder. Now if I'm working on a specific section of my project, say one where I only need interior shots, I can twirl up the exterior folder and I'll hide all those other collections. Going back to my event browser, the next clips were shot at a fair that was actually created for the premiere event. So I'm going to twirl open the exterior folder and with it selected hit command shift N to create a new folder inside the exterior folder. I'm calling this one fair. With the fair folder selected I'm going to create a new collection and call it ferris wheel because I saw some shots of a ferris wheel. Then click on the event select those ferris wheel shots and drop them into my new collection. Okay, one last thing. I'm going to create one more new collection. There we go. And notice that when I do, the empty collection offers me the option of importing files. What this means is that you can do some of this organization before you even start ingesting your video. Let's call this collection VO, which stands for voiceover. With the voiceover collection selected, I'm going to click the Import Files button. Here on my desktop, I saved some voiceover narration that I recorded for this project. I'm just going to make sure that the Copy Files to Events folder is checked, then hit Import. The file is going to be copied to the same place as all the rest of my media, and the clip is instantly added to this collection. So this can be a very quick and easy way to tag your media as it's coming in. Okay, as you can see, there are many ways to keep yourself organized in Final Cut, even if you're working with hundreds of different clips. I'm Andy Neal, and these are the ins and outs of Final Cut Pro 10.